Hi guys, so today I just got in the Today Special from Home Shopping Network, which is the Wolfgang Puck like 5-in-1 air fryer convection oven type thing. I just want to show you, this is the one I had before and I bought two, well, this one and one other one. The one before this one was big and it was awesome and I loved it. It fit 13 by 9 pans. It was great. Um, it stopped working. I don't remember why it stopped working, if it just didn't turn on. Something was wrong with it after a few years, so it, it took a while. And they're not super expensive. They can be 100, 200, 300. It depends on the model. I think this one was like in the 170s, 180s. I don't quite remember. Um, but the problem with this one now is I love it. It works great and it does pressure cooking. That's why I like this one. So you seal it up here and you can push down that handle and you can cook meat really fast, just like any pressure cooker, but it's like a convection oven. Um, but something happened where the timer, I don't know if you can hear it, it won't stop, even if it's unplugged. <laughs> and sometimes that happens with like, you know, a regular toaster oven, you leave it, uh, you unplug it, and if that timer's going, it goes tick, 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 tick. But even when it gets to the end, it just keeps ticking. So I have to go stay on and listen. No more ticking. And unplug it, because if you leave it on stay on, it'll be on, right? So I have to unplug it every time, and it's so annoying. And it only started in that a couple months ago, and it's just, it's too much. So, like I said, I just got my box in. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to switch this out for this, and we'll talk about it a little bit. I'll get this camera on a tripod, and um, I'll probably make some brownies. I always say whenever I get a convection oven or one of these toaster ovens, the first thing I do is cook brownies. And if it does not cook my brownies well, then it's going back to the store because I want it to bake cakes really quickly. Well, and that's the other thing. People say, oh, you cook it in half the time, or you save 25%. No, if it's a cake or a bread or whatever. I don't really make cookies in them. Cookies are very small and they can burn quickly and this is such a small space. Um, I just, I have never really made cookies in these guys. But um, it doesn't cook it in half the time or less. That, it, for me, yes, maybe. Well, not half the time, but still like a quarter of your time. I've never had this cook brownies or cake faster. It just doesn't. Um, I don't know who comes up with that or they always say that, but I've worked with these for like a decade now and <laughs> they don't. It just takes the same amount of time, but it's just a smaller space and the, instead of heating up like your whole oven, right? I have my KitchenAid double oven. I've never even, I baked in it one time since I got them put in <clears throat> about a year ago. So hopefully I'll use them more often now, but that's, you know, uh, winter's coming up, but this thing is amazing and I don't even use it. So uh, let me open that up, switch it out and let's try right. it and uh, show you when I open the box. It's literally just right here. There is no other packaging. I do think that's a bit of a bummer, especially because the box was damaged a little bit, but hopefully, um, the paint is okay. I picked the red color. And I'm sorry if the intro was a little bit long talking about other convection ovens. I just want you guys to have some tips in case you're looking for one or if you're thinking about getting one. That's normally how I work with them. Um, let's see how heavy this thing is. It's not, it's not heavy at all, really. Which is kind of a bummer because the one I just got moved over is super heavy and I love that. The other thing I love about the one I just showed you guys is that the door doesn't just close like this. It locks in and I always look, whenever I look for a toaster oven or a convection oven, I prefer for the door to lock in. But anyway, I'm going to put this on the counter and then I'll show you the accessories it came with. Okay. Um, a few of the things I like about it, just picking it up right now, is that it has like little handles on the side. So if you need to move it or even just push it to the side, it's easy to do. It has something you can grip onto. On the back, I was wondering where the vents are because my other one vents out the top a lot and that kind of bothers me because it's right under my um, cabinet, which is typical. Any house you have, obviously you have your cabinets. I have other areas where I don't have cabinets, but I don't want to just put this by the window or whatever. So um, I did like that the vents are on the side, either side, but in the back there is one that's kind of concerning for me. It has this little kind of tray, but there's a vent inside of there. So. And then a little bit coming out the back also, which isn't the worst. Like I said, I mean, I have spices above here. That's why I don't want to heat those things up. But, you know, the cord is not too long because that's typical of things that, you know, you don't want it to um, be too long just in case it's some kind of hazard. But let me take this off. The paint looks great. Um, supposedly it holds up to 11 by 11 and maybe a little bit larger pan. So I will, I think in the specifications, it wasn't really easy to see exactly what size the inside is. But I told my husband, like, if we took this off of our old one, it was on the side, right, all the dials, it'd be about the same width. So I don't know that we lost any space inside, but we will see. So open it up. It does have a nice 
snap to it. It's just I really like when it clips in because it holds the heat better than if it just kind of starts coming out or if this spring kind of wears out, the thing just kind of stays open. I don't like dealing with that. So it's going to be something I think about. But I love Wolfgang Puck. I love have all his pans and, and they're great. So and they are not the kind that are coated with any kind of coating. I like not nonstick pans. I use his stainless steel pans because all you have to do when you use stainless steel guys, they'll be nonstick. If you heat up the pan really well, and once the pan's hot, then add your oil and heat that up really well, and then add in whatever you're gonna cook. And if you're not gonna use too much oil, well, that's a different story, but that, that part doesn't matter. You really have to just heat up your pans, okay? People, I think, get kind of like, oh no, I'll just use this other stuff, and we know with Teflon is not that great, especially when it starts deteriorating, and we don't want that in our food, so. Just, that's the tip I actually got from Wolfgang, and it works. Like, my pans look perfect, they look great, and the food does not stick. So, it comes with one rack, even though it always has two things, and I wish they would give you two racks, because maybe you can cook two little things of cookies at a time, but they always give you one rack. So, one rack goes in here. And you can put it here, you can put it one lower, and at the top, it looks like. I don't think there's any more yet. So the very top, middle, or super low, down here. Oopsie. All right, there is the rotisserie function, which I had on my other machine. I never used it, but that includes this thing here that helps you bring out your hunk of meat if you have it in there. And apparently the rotisserie, unless I'm missing something, it might be in the package, is only these two pieces of tongue metals, which I think is weird. Huh, I guess so, well, no, it doesn't make sense. There should be like a stick. Okay, well maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe I didn't get it, <laughs> I'll have to see about that. Like I said, I didn't use it anyway, but it'd be nice if I had all the pieces. Let me look in the box one more time. Oh yeah, it's over here. Just don't throw this away. For some reason, they stuck that piece to the styrofoam here. So be careful with that. This piece right here is what goes in your meat. And then these other pieces go through it. And then we have our baking tray. They call it your cookie tray, which like I said, I don't really make cookies. I would never. I use this for like if I'm making tater tots or um, chicken for the kids or any other meat that I could put on here. Um, but now we have the air frying thing, so maybe I don't need, well, you will need to use this to catch the grease or anything that might come off your air fried foods. But uh, that's usually how I use this. It's nice and heavy. This is uh, probably the best quality one I've gotten so far from them. It feels really nice. This is the basket you use for your air frying. So it has little feet. And I'm assuming you would place it on this. I haven't read anything about that. But you get it in there and you do your air frying in your basket and you saw tons of demos if you watched the day that he was on with the Today Special. And then we have, you know, your little book. It usually has some recipes in it and I always keep this in my kitchen anyway just to kind of check it out again. So here's where it says that stick, right? You put it through, you're going to put it through your meat and then put those hooks into the meat so the meat's not just flopping around and then you hook that piece of rod into here and it'll start spinning for you once you select that and then you use that tool to help you bring it back out because it'll be hot um how to use your air fryer garlic wings crunchy chickpeas italian nuggets open-faced reuben sandwich it's just a several air fried lemon pies that's interesting mixed berry cobbler pork kebabs there's just a bunch of stuff in there uh, let me push this in. So we close that up. The dials on the very top are... You have your timer, which right now is set to off, I guess. Well, your temperature, warm through 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, and then toast and broil. We have warm, broil as far as the functions. Warm, broil, toast, bake, air fry, rotisserie. And speed, low, medium, high. That's the only one that kind of, uh, speed. But um, I, he did set that when he was actually just baking things or cooking things. So you have to read about that in the book because to me, this doesn't do anything. Just the same reason I told you, like when you cook anything in here, you know, uh, cakes and stuff like that, that doesn't really change anything. But let me see if I can plug this in. Okay, and I usually keep it in the corner. I don't know, I'll have to see about that. I might still, I'll probably just keep it in the corner like I always do. Kind of tucked away, I don't want the kids to touch it. <laughs> so, um, 
I guess what I'm gonna do now is whip together some uh, brownies and by that I mean like literally just a brownie mix and I always add extra chocolate chips and walnuts in my brownie mix and then bake them but I'll show you that in just a second so let me see right now that it's off nothing's on you see it's on off I'm gonna change it well let me take this plastic bag out of here <laughs> and it's just on right now I don't see a light but they said, oh, it has an oven light. It's because you can switch it on, I guess. So it's not just going to come on because it's on. So that's really nice. My other ones didn't have that option unless you open the door, then the light comes on. So you have an oven light switch, and it turns on and off. Um, right now it's on warm, but, you know, you can kick it up to wherever. I do like that this isn't, like, a clicky knob because sometimes those are the kind of break. It supposedly just goes there. Uh, it's on warm, broil, toast. I hear different functions going. Bake. I do not hear anything on that, and they said it was convection. I'm going to have to look that up, because to be honest, I don't know that it's a convection. Let's see. Okay, I hear some noise that sounds like a fan. So it kicked on with the high. Maybe I didn't hear it so much on medium or low. So that's your bake with the convection. Air fry has more of a, an air sound. When I open this, it stops. I don't know if you can hear that. When I open it, it stops. And then rotisserie. I don't know that I should turn that on right now. Let me... Ooh, it's getting hot. <laughs> okay, it's hot already, so I'm not even going to mess with that. But with the rotisserie, once you have your little spit in there and you turn it on, you put it on rotisserie. I would put it on rotisserie first, then turn it on. Make sure it's off. Um, it'll start spinning. So, again, let me throw together some brownies, and we'll see how this thing bakes. Hopefully this is okay angle. I just want to show you real quick. So this is just our basic brownie mix from Duncan Hines. And I just have some Ghirardelli chocolate chips that I use whenever, or any chocolate chips. Just like a third of a bag maybe. So I just want to show you what I do. I just add those in. And I do have walnuts, but I have to chop them and I really need to get dinner going. So I'm just going to use these pecan halves. And all I did was smash the bag from the outside of the bag. I hit it with uh, a glass cup so it would kind of break up a little bit so this is going to be pecans which I normally like I said do almonds and just as much as you like I'm just going to throw a few in because if I had some caramel bits to be honest little milkmaids cut those up throw them in there I would do that too especially with the pecans but I don't have any right now so I usually mix this so it's almost all completely mixed and then I add in those things um, and I have a nine by nine pan that I'm going to spray with my Baker's Joy, which if you don't have this stuff, you need to get it. I love this stuff. It's just basically flour and oil already kind of mixed in there together. So it's fat-free. I don't know. But anyway, um, mine's kind of a little bit seen better days, so I need to wipe this clean and see if it sprays better. It's been spraying kind of crazy recently. You see that? It should be more. It's okay. So there's that. Again, like I said, it kind of has like flour in it. That's why it's all white and thick looking. Okay. And I'm just going to spread this out in here. Ooh, mix it a little better. And I'll be right back once I dump this into my show you. I always use a spatula to try to get every last bit. I do not like leaving any waste in the bowl. That drives me nuts. And I think I mentioned to you guys before, like when you watch like Food Network or these other shows, and they're like, oh, they just leave all kinds of stuff in the bowl. I'm like, no. No, <laughs> it drives me nuts. But anyway. Um, even my fork and everything, I try to clean off as well as I can, get everything in there. And also, that doesn't have to go down your drain, you know? So, let's just get as much as we can off in there. Okay, and just give it a little shake. Okay, I'm going to try to do this with one hand. So, uh, I read over his book, and he has a, uh, or that little booklet, and he has a recipe in there for uh, berry cobbler, right? It does tell you how to truss a chicken, how to get your meat ready if you're doing prime rib, so all those things are in there. Again, I'm just trying to see if this thing will bake and, and if it works <laughs> is where I'm at. Um, so it does say that when you're baking, or at least the berry cobbler, it says to have it on low. So I'm going to hold this in my hand and hopefully not make a big mess since it's still on the tripod. So I have it off right now. We're going to put it on 350. We're setting it to bake. Right, just turn it to bake and then on low. So we have it on low. Now the brownies, especially in a nine by nine, it says 27 to 30 minutes. So I will just set this to 30. And the power button came on. 
You do not have to preheat this, but if you want to, go ahead. It only takes a couple minutes. Um, he's like, don't even worry about preheating, just put it in. And I didn't even measure. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so this is a nine by nine pan, but as you can see, it has an extra like inch and a half on either side. Um, but while that, let me close that up. I'm gonna go grab my ruler so I can give you a good number because we want to know exactly what this thing will do. So let me go grab my ruler real quick and I'll measure that for you guys. Okay, let me try it out. It stops the cooking, but that's okay. Uh, this is a 12 inch ruler and I would say your pan has to be about 12 inches because it has to fit in these grooves, but also fit in here. So maybe, maybe 12 and a half even inches side to side and the depth is pretty darn good too. Oh my gosh. Um, about 11 and a half inches deep. So she was saying an 11 11 fits in there. Um, you know, a nine by 11 pan, which is normally what I like to use, uh, should fit in there pretty well. The only things that are those bumps, right? That rotisserie bump and the other little bump over there. So I, you might have to contend with that where your pan has to be smaller than the, where those little bumps stick out, but they are not huge. They stick out about half an inch. And so that's going to reduce by an inch, um, your space. But again, I just measured it was about 12 and a half inches. So if you're losing an inch, you know, I know she said for sure 11 by 11, but she didn't say much bigger than that. So, I mean, 11 by nine obviously would work. So pretty good, unless it has handles, right? So um, I can show you, well, I'm not gonna show it to you guys, but I have another pan that I use and I believe it is Nordic Ware. It looks like this one, but it's all metal so that you can do casseroles or big things like that or any pretty pan, usually the pretty ones like ceramic ones. They might have a little bit of a handle, but I have a ton of them from home shopping, I guess, that are that Temptations, and they don't have handles. They're usually kind of smooth on the sides. So um, I, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty much the same as the one I just put away. And as you can see, it has a much smaller footprint on my countertop. All right, so we will be back in half an hour and see how these are baking. So it's been about five or seven minutes and I'm smelling brownies. I've been smelling them for a few seconds. I want you to see the top. I just noticed is nice and shiny the way you want it, where it gets all good and crispy. <laughs> Hopefully it's looking good. Um, I started bubbling kind of on the sides after like three or four minutes. So I thought that's kind of fast, but that's okay. Cause um, it's looking good. I mean, the whole top looks really nice. Um, like it's baking evenly. Uh, I do like, I will say that I guess you can control like the low, medium, high. And when at first I thought that was weird, but with the convection, that's why I always like, like my new kitchen aids. I don't want it to be convecting all the time, especially with my bread or like the breads that I make, the like yeast bread. I want it to be classic, low, slow, fast, however it needs to be, but so that you make a nice bread, right? So I do like you can control that. So right now he said, you know, for your baked goods to put it on low. And I think that's about right because you don't need the heat blowing all over, even though it, it is still keeping it, you know, um, hopefully it looks like, um, even, but just not that, that fan just always blowing, you know, to make it faster, to cook it faster, which is not really what we want. So I'm really happy with it so far. Um, it looks like I might have obviously 20 or so minutes left, but um, yeah, I'll come back when it dings. Okay guys, I think this is gonna ding soon. So let me open this up. Let me see what the oven light, that's weird. The oven light works when the door's closed. When you open it, it turns off. So that is odd. I did open it uh, about halfway through and turned them around because I would do that with baking anyway. I always turn the item just so it gets some good coverage. It looks like it's gonna beep or ping or whatever it does. Let me, that's pretty darn good. Let me see if I can close up on that. It's almost clean. Now with brownies, you don't want it to be super clean because you want uh, them to be moist. So that's really good. I think we're about 27 minutes or so because it's not quite to off. So I'm gonna leave it in here to cook. I'm gonna give it back the minute that I just stole from it. And see the oven light's on because I pressed it on, but if I open the door, it turns off, which is odd, and you can't just have it stay on. So I'm gonna let it go ahead and ding, and it looks pretty great, guys. So I'm gonna let, you know, I'll, I'll come back at it when I take them out just to give you that one little extra bit. And that sizzling you hear, hopefully not too loud, is my chorizo. I am making chorizo tacos. I know this is weird. I put a piece of metal, like a old pan, one of those junky pans from the Dollar Tree, to not get on my back splash because I do fry a lot of stuff. I mean, it's Mexican food. That's how we do it. But if you want to know really quickly how I do these, it's just about a pound of um, chorizo. 
the kind that comes in the little casings, like from the Mexican market. But if you can't find that, you can buy the cheap stuff that comes in a plastic tube. Chorizo, um, usually pork. You can use either one. Actually, I don't even know. Um, most times it's pork, but you can use beef. Saute it with some onion, just a little bit of onion. You can salt and pepper if you need, but it's usually pretty salty already. And while you're that's going, you cut up about two or three potatoes in chunks. And you put them in a bowl, a microwave safe bowl, with some plastic wrap on top. And then you cut a few little holes in your plastic wrap. I know I'm totally off topic, but... And then you're going to dump these. And it says without the cooking liquid is usually what they say, but this is never really a cooking liquid. I don't know what kind of potatoes would release so much liquid, but what happens is they kind of parboil in the microwave, so they're almost cooked. Throw them in there, saute them up, and then cook them for another 10 to 15 minutes. And, you know, heat up some corn tortillas, flour if you like a little fat in your life, a little flour tortilla, but usually I do corn tortillas. And put your little, uh, your little mix that you just made in there. Of course, you're cooking them until the potatoes are soft is what you're looking for, so that's what I said, 10 to 15 minutes. I do cover it because I like that to work faster. So I'll add them in, saute them, cover it 10 to 15 minutes, and um, serve them on a, on a tortilla, and garnish it with a little, um, oh, what's that called? Cilantro, maybe a little piece of uh, avocado, a little slice or two, and then you can top it with some Mexican cheese, like that stinky crumbly cheese. If uh, you don't like that, use whatever cheese you like. Don't use cheese. If you have feta, little trick, don't tell anybody. Uh, use feta because it's almost similar to that Mexican cheese. It's probably a little softer, but it has that same kind of like salty, pungent kind of thing going on. Um, and you're good to go. My kids, everyone loves this. Everyone that's eating this is like, they love it. Um, again, I have it like on high, medium, high heat is basically how I cook it the whole time. Anyway, I'll be right back for those brownies. I just went ding. Just in time for me to show you. I just mixed those in. I'm just going to put the lid on them again. Probably 10 minutes because they were pretty soft going in. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit and just let those cook. Okay, so I need my... So I'm going to grab this. And again, I just let it go the rest of those three minutes or whatever it was that I probably needed. And to be honest, that's pretty good. They are a little bit darker on the edges than I would expect. Uh, but like I said, it started bubbling within a couple minutes around the edges. Um, make sure that's off and it's off and everything's off that's great uh, I'm gonna let these cool off for a little bit I'll probably cut them up like I said it looks like they baked up really nicely if there's a problem like I'll, I'll let you guys know when I come back but I think I'm just gonna let them cool cut them into some pieces I'll show you kind of what they look like probably without any mu you know with some music over there everything you need to know is in this little book as far as like if you need to air fry use your wire rack always put that black pan under it right so on the very bottom section where I have this rack right now that's where you would put that you want to toast um, do other things like that use that middle space for broiling it says to put it on the top space but you put your meat on that black rack so everything's in here so I just wanted to see that it actually worked and that it worked well so I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing right now like I said it's a little darker around there than I would like but for a little oven that I didn't have to heat up my whole big oven, then I'm happy. Oh, since I did mention my KitchenAid stuff, everything when I remodeled the kitchen, or after we had to remodel the kitchen, is KitchenAid, 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 and um, that guy. I have been loving. It's been great. I love the way the microwave sounds when it goes off. If I could have had just a hood, I would have loved that, but it was not possible to do in this house, in this area. So this is a recirculating hood, um, but it works great. So. Love my burners. Lots of options on this burners, crazy options, but they all work. Um, some are small. Oh, I think there's only one really small one. You know how sometimes they give you this little tiny thing? So it's all functional, you know? Even though it's small, it's not super small. Um, that big one in the middle, they all have, almost all of them have double burners. So you can use this, the little tiny inside, just the outside, both of them. So that's usually what I do here. I usually have both of them going. Um, this one's not as large as that one. But anyway, that's not what this is about. I will cut up these brownies, and it looks great. I love the size of this thing. I like the way it fits right in that corner. The other one w went all the way pretty much to the edges. I don't know if you had noticed. So I do like this as a smaller profile. Um, it did throw out most of the heat out the back, though. I did notice that. It didn't get super hot up here. I mean, I can touch it. It's not burning my hand, but it does say it's a hot surface. Which is kind of misleading because on HSN they had a bunch of stuff on top, like little decorative things like, oh, so I thought, oh, it must stay cool, but no. Um, so maybe when they're doing other things, like maybe the air fryer or something else, maybe the heat comes out these side vents. But right now, most of it was coming out the back, so just so you know, um, to not put it up against anything. So that corner kind of works out because it gives it a little more air behind there instead of just being pushed against the flat wall. 
All right, guys. Well, um, if you're looking for one of these guys, um, I hope you try it out. I think it's great. And then right now with HSN, it depends on when you're watching this, you have until January 31st to return it. So after holidays, after everything, you put it through the ringer. If you don't like it, send it back, you know? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.